Another one of your book is um, called, um, actually no, I don't know the name of the book, but it's with uh, Muin Rabani about solving the Israel-Palestine conflict. So how, how do we do it? Uh, basically, to put it in a nutshell, if you're serious about politics and you're serious about trying to build a mass movement, you can't go beyond what the public is ready to accept. The public is ready to accept, in my opinion, what international law says. So if you were to put forth a very simple slogan, when you're asked, how do you want to solve it? I say, easy. All I want to do is enforce the law. The law is clear, it's unambiguous, it's uncomplicated. There is a near unanimous consensus on what the law says. And that's what I want to do. But the law is clear. The settlements are illegal, that's correct. East Jerusalem is occupied Palestinian territory, that's correct. The West Bank and Gaza are occupied Palestinian territory, that's correct. But it's also correct that Israel is a state, that's also the law. If you want to use the law as a weapon or as leverage in order to reach public opinion, you can't be selective with the law. You can't say, I have the right to walk at the green, but I'm kind of agnostic on the red. No. If you have the right to walk at the green, it's because you have an obligation to stop at the red. The law is a package deal. So if you want to use the law, the law also says Israel is a state. And the problem with the solidarity movement is it's a kind of mirror image of the Palestinian, the so-called Palestinian Authority. In my opinion, the Palestinian Authority, the so-called Palestinian Authority, I think its goals are correct. It always talks about international law and international legitimacy. Namely, what the law says, what the UN says, what the, that's what they say they want. Their goals are correct. The problem is their means will never work because the Palestinians' main asset is the Palestinian people the four million people of Palestine. And if you mobilize them, galvanize them, I don't think Israel has a prayer. Can't win. But the Palestinian Authority will never mobilize them because they're afraid if you mobilize them, the Authority will meet the same fate as Mubarak and all the others because they're a, a gang of corrupt, uh, wretched uh, collaborators. So their goal is correct, but their means will never achieve their goal because all they want to do is bargain you know, behind closed doors with the Israelis. And the Israelis will never give them anything. You know, Frederick Douglass, the American abolitionist, power never concedes anything without a demand. It never has, it never will. Unless you have the force to extract it from Israel, they will never give you anything. Uh, and the main force, the main weapon, is the people, and they'll never organize it. The solidarity movement, I think its means are correct to try to, uh, I have no problem with the boycotts, divestment, sanctions, and all of that, uh, nonviolent civil disobedience like the flotillas, uh, the legal weapon like the attempt at universal jurisdiction, I think the means are right. But the goal will never fly. You, don't, you want to say you're agnostic on Israel? You want to say you want one state? There's nothing in the international law for one state. You're not going to win a public to that. Once you step out of your little cult, your little ghetto, and you enter the real world, and you try to reach a broad public, and you say, we want to, well, we are a rights-based organization, which is what BDS likes to say. And we want to enforce our rights. 
Okay, the law. So, once you step out of your ghetto, you're no longer just talking to yourself. There is the other side. They also make themselves heard. So they say, no, that's not true. They're lying. They say they want to enforce the law, but they really want to destroy Israel. They want to eliminate Israel. So now the public hears both sides. And they come back to the solidarity movement, and they say, is that true? You want to destroy Israel? And then the solidarity movement says, oh, we don't have a position on Israel. We don't take a position. Oh, really? You don't take a position on Israel? Well, then we're not going to take a position on BDS. The law is clear. You want to use the International Court of Justice on your side? Okay, the International Court of Justice, it said, the West Bank, Gaza, East Jerusalem, they are occupied Palestinian territories. That's correct. But the ICJ also said that pre-June 67 border is Israel's legal border. That's their country. That's the law. You want, to pro you want to promote one state? Fine, that's your right. But then don't pretend you're trying to enforce the law. That's not true. You want to selectively enforce the law. But I think the way I see it is that when you talked about the Palestinians, you said four million people. But what the BDS movement, and I think more and more that the Palestinian people in general wants to, to portray that the Palestinian people are not four million. There's the, the refugees, there is the citizens, Palestinian citizens of Israel. So it comes to a, a, a much bigger number. And I think just to, to conclude that the, the fact that not taking a position on do we want the state of Israel to exist, or, I think it's not saying that we want to destroy Israel, it's that saying that the 20% Israeli Palestinian citizens of Israel have the right to have the same rights than Israelis. So, Frank. I'm not talking for the video. I'm talking to you. Yeah. And I'm getting a little bit exasperated with what I think is a whole lot of nonsense. You know? Uh, and I have been at this 30 years. I have earned my right to speak my mind, and I'm not going to tolerate what I think is silliness, childishness, and a lot of leftist posturing. There is a settlement it's been proposed by the international community for resolving the conflict. Now, it does include a statement, a just resolution of the refugee question based on UN Resolution 194, the right of return and compensation. There is nothing anywhere in the international consensus for resolving the conflict that says anything about the minority inside Israel, the uh, Palestinian Arab minority. It's not there. You want to drag in that minority and start talking about them? Well, in my opinion, you'll get nowhere because the whole world is filled with countries that persecute their minorities. Would you like to be an untouchable in India? Do you know what it's like to be a Dalit in India? Do you want to go through every country in the Middle East and how they treat their minorities? And then it's just open season by the other side to show what hypocrites you are. Why are you focusing on that minority and not 10 million other minorities in the world? If you look at, for example, when Arafat, Yasser Arafat declared a state in November 1988, and you read the platform, the political document, and so forth. There is no mention of the Palestinian Arabs. There is a mention of the refugee question. That's correct. There is no mention of the Palestinian Arabs in Israel. People want to just drag in the kitchen sink because it's not really about them. I mean, we have to be honest. And I loathe the, the disingenuousness. They don't want Israel. They, want to, they think they're being very clever. They call it their three, you know, three tier. We want the end of the occupation, we want the right of return, 
and we want equal rights for Arabs in Israel. And they think they're very clever because they know the result of implementing all three is what? What's the result? You know and I know. What's the result? I think we don't there's know. no Israel. I think no, no, no. No, no, but I think the result no, is like no. there's no Israel the there, way Israel is now. There but, is no hmm. Israel full stop. And the law is Israel is a state. It has its defined borders. And if you want to eliminate Israel, that's your right. But I don't think you're going to reach anybody. I think it's a non-starter. If you say you want to enforce the law, and in fact impose it on Israel, because they're not going to be accepted, then the law is clear. And you have to say, and you'll never hear the Solidarity Movement say, two states. Go look at the UN General Assembly resolution. It always begins, you know, peaceful settlement of the Palestine question. The last part where they lay out the terms for resolving the conflict, they say, a two-state settlement, and then they say, East Jerusalem, West Bank, Gaza, occupied Palestinian territory, settlements are illegal under international law, and a, a just resolution of the refugee question based on the right of return. But it's all within that framework. And if you don't want the same framework, then stop talking about the law. And stop trying to be so clever. Because you're only clever in your cult. The moment you step out, you have to deal with Israeli propaganda. And here, they have a case. They say, no, they're not really talking about rights. They're talking about they want to destroy Israel. And in fact, I think they're right. I think that's true. I'm not going to lie. When I do politics, I have one standard. You know what my standard is? Can I defend this position in public, not can I defend it in my little cult, but whether stepping outside my cult, whether I can defend it in public. And when I listen to Muin, because we spoke together in Boston, and Muin is writing the chapter in the book on the refugees, and I listen very carefully to him, because we, uh, the division of labor was, I'll do the settlements, he'll do the refugees, and we haven't had a chance, we've corresponded, but we haven't seen each other's positions yet. And I listened to him, and I didn't listen with the, with the ear, is he right or is he wrong? Is what he's saying moral, is what he's saying immoral? What I was listening was, can I defend it or can't I defend it? If I can't defend it, then what am I doing? What's the point? Do we want to build a movement or do we want to create a cult? Now, Frank, you have to be honest. Honesty is important in politics. If you tell a public, Israel's population is 7.5 million. Of those 7.5 million, 5.5 million are Jewish and the other two million are Palestinian Arab and other, uh, and uh, neither of the above. And you say, as a lot of the Solidarity Movement says, all six million Palestinian refugees have to go back. Okay? Now, will a public think it's reasonable for six million Palestinians to descend on a country which right now has 1.8 million Palestinians and 5.5 million Jews, which means you're going to completely overnight, radically, completely change the demographic balance in the country. Will a, will a person, the public, find that reasonable? My answer is you can give them every fact behind the creation of the refugees, and they'll still see the Israeli position that that's not tenable. I don't think you can sell it. But I, I do think, I mean, I totally get your point, but I do think you're portraying a, a, a darker picture of the Solidarity Movement as really where it is now. I 
I don't really hear people saying, I think people are, are very educated on the refugee mm -hmm. issue and I've never heard people saying you know, six million refugees. I hear it all the time. Okay, so we Not can... never, mm -hmm. I'm saying no, reverse. Yeah, okay. I hear it all the time. I just spoke last night in uh, Glasgow mm -hmm. and that was the first statement. What about the six million Palestinian refugees who want to return? That was okay. the very first question. I hear it all the time. I hear sometimes people say, until every, seven, every one of the seven million go back, we won't accept the, uh, the settlement. Okay, but I think that that's people talking on behalf, in a way, of them. I mean, talking to Palestinian refugees, some of them know there's also a compromise. Some of them would like to return. Fine. Some of them. And I think Palestinians are perfectly reasonable. And I think a reasonable resolution of the conflict is possible. But when you start inflating the numbers, I don't know what you're trying to do. Do you want to resolve the conflict? Or do you want to re, you know, uh, create terror in the hearts of every Israeli? No, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? The way I view it is that they don't want to inflate the numbers. And the, the conflict has been on the two-state basis since the like Arafat accepted it in the late 70s. No, I don't agree. The conflict has been on a two-state basis since 1947 when there was a partition resolution. Okay. And when, Ara when Arafat in 1988 announced a Palestinian statehood, he referred back to the partition resolution. He says, I am making this claim on the basis of the unfinished business of 1947. So let's say, yeah, it's been since 47 about the two-state solution. But an international law has repeatedly said that the two-state solution was the right settlement. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't happened. So I think the fact that it's not inflating the numbers, saying that there's like 7 million Palestinians, there are Palestinian citizens of Israel. I have, I have no doubt about that. And I think that my problem is that I agree about being um, pragmatist. But when pragmatism doesn't work, what do you do? And in the solidarity movement that you I'm not sure you call the Friday really movement a cult, but you referred to a cult, maybe talking about the BDS movement. I do think that the, the cult is not a little cult, it's, it's actually getting bigger. Maybe it's not, and, and the BDS movement has actually, with its flaws maybe, succeeded in, in grasping people's attention and, and, and students. Frank, and Frank and it's we, we, we have to free ourselves of illusions. When I was, I don't know how old you are, but when I was a young man, I was a Maoist, you know? And we always thought our movement is growing. 6,000, 8,000, we're growing, you know? What you call growing, how many people are you really reaching? I'm, I'm are you reaching a public, a mainstream public? I don't think so. I mean, it takes time, but I think, for example, like this Israeli Apartheid Week starting in a few weeks, end of February, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not an orga organizer of this, but I know lots of people that organize it. And uh, and this year, it's like there's like 27 countries involved, loads of campuses that never touched it. And I think if the students start to get involved, you know, sometimes the students can influence their parents, and then so I think it, you know it's a small process, but I think the BDS movement is helping actually have, making I, the movement I've a more said, global well, movement. I, I said clearly. I said, I think the Solidarity Movement has the right tactics. I support the BDS, but I said it will never reach a broad public until and unless they're explicit on their goal. And their goal has to include recognition of Israel, or it's a non-starter it won't reach the public. Because the moment you go out there, Israel will start to say, what about us? And they won't recognize our right. And in fact, that's correct. You can't answer the Israelis on that because they're making a statement that's factually correct. It's not an accident, an unwitting omission that BDS does not mention Israel. You know that and I know that. It's not like they're 
oh, we forgot to mention it, they won't mention it because they know it will split the movement. Because there's a large segment of the movement, component of the movement, which wants to eliminate Israel. But I think, again, talking in terms of eliminating Israel is, is scares people because they don't understand what eliminating Israel yeah, means. But, but, it doesn't but, but mean Frank, bombing. Frank, and the BDS movement is clear about like, Israeli Jews Frank, living in the Frank, in Frank, Frank. There's a law. You say you want to enforce the law. BDS says we're rights-based. Okay? Is Israel part of the law or not? When the International Law of a Court of Justice made all of its findings in its advisory opinion, one of its findings was the June 67 border is Israel's legal border. That is Israel. That's the law. How can you claim that you want to enforce the law and omit that aspect of the law? The two-state solution, we know that the facts on the ground, mainly because of Israel, like, for example, building in the E1 zone, right. are going to make the, one st the two-state solution pretty much impossible. No, so it's what? not true. I will talk about it at length tonight. I'm going to go through the maps. Okay. And then you'll judge for yourself. It's so intertwined. For me, like, the two not, people are so intertwined that now the, the one state okay, already Frank, exists Frank. and it's there. No, Frank... Uh, if what you were saying were true, of course I'd have to agree with you. But I don't think it's accurate. And you'll just, if, I don't know if you're staying to hear me tonight. I but, can't say Yeah, that. well, I, I'm going to... I've, I've heard you I'm gonna go, you in December. Yeah, I, I'll go through the maps I have today. I'll show you the maps, exactly what it looks like. Well, the two-state solution looks like. No, what the, the issue with the settlements looks like. Okay. I'll, I go through the maps. And I brought them along this time, and they'll be on the screen, and you'll be able to judge for yourself. The problem is people are all over the place. When you say it's practically possible, then they say they're ideologically against it. And if you say it's ideologically, you will never be able to reach a public with it, then they say it's practically impossible. Because they don't want to recognize Israel. So it's like every kind of excuse and pretext. I don't see where that's going to go. You know. You talk about BDS, they, always, they make all these claims about their victories. All their claims about their victories. Well, you know what? You see these ten fingers? These more than suffice to count all their victories. There are superfluous fingers here to count all their victories. It's just, it's a cult where the guru says, we have all these victories, and everyone nods their head. And nobody sits down to do the arithmetic on their own. I see viola mentioned like 20 times a year. They keep repeating it as if it's a new victory. How many victories are there? Let's not get carried away. I hear them say BDS is the most successful tactic. Yes, it's had some victories, no question about it. But the way people promote it, as if it's proven itself and we're on the edge, you know, on the verge of a victory of some sort. It's just sheer nonsense. It's sheer nonsense. It's a cult. And I personally, I'm tired of it. I went through my cult stage. I was a Maoist. And now when I look back, I'll tell you the truth. There were like two competing possibilities. You can be a Maoist, a Leninist, and all that sort of crap. And you could waste 20 years of your life. Or you could have worked with people like Ralph Nader, like my best friend, Alan Nairn. He was, uh, if you know Alan Nairn, he, he worked under Nader. And he got a lot of bills passed through Congress. A lot of good stuff, you know. It's nice we have seat belts. That was Ralph Nader. Airbags. That was Ralph Nader. Thousands of little things that made life, you know, saved millions of lives. I'm not going to be in a cult again. You know, I'm not, I'm not going through that stage again with the gurus in Ramallah, you know, giving out marching orders. And then if you disagree, they say, 
10,556,454 Palestinian civil society organizations have endorsed this. Who are these organizations? They're NGOs in Ramallah, one-person operations, and they claim to represent what they call this thing, Palestinian civil society. If they really were Palestinian civil society, as they claim, then why can they never organize a demonstration of more than 500 people? If they really are, they represent Palestinian civil society. I hear this all the time. Have you ever seen a statement by BDS that doesn't have the first subordinate clause? BDS, the largest civil society organized uh, protest, you know, and da, 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 endorsed by 26 trillion, 555 million billion, you know, organizations. They're just Ramallah, you know, NGOs. Represent absolutely nothing. Nice trade unions right. as well. And, oh, uh, look, let's stop. You know, if it, if, if it were what you said, where are the demonstrations there? If there were really an active... Uh, BDS, I think he's turned to the international yeah, but, community, it, not to yeah, the... Well, that to me is a problem. Mm. I'll tell you the truth. Because if you're in an indigenous organization in Palestine, you should be organizing your people. And it's our job to organize from our side. I went through many solidarity movements. The Vietnamese never gave us marching orders. The Nicaraguans, the El Salvadorans, they didn't tell you what to do. They organized their people. And the solidarity movement abroad, we were supposed to make the judgment about how best to organize ourselves. And it's a very strange thing when the people there who claim to be the leaders of civil society, they can't organize a demonstration of 500 people among themselves but they're telling everybody else abroad what to do. That's it's a weird inversion. When I was first involved in the Gaza Freedom March, I don't know if you were involved in it. Yeah, I heard about okay. it. Okay, they said they were going to bring out 50,000 people in Gaza. 50,000 people. And you know how many they brought out? They brought out 300. Yeah. It's all, it's a cult. You make up numbers. You fantasize, and all the followers are supposed to nod their head. Well, you know what? I'm 58 years old. I've been involved in this 30 years. I gave, and I'm going to say, I gave, you know, for a Westerner, not for a Palestinian. I gave my life to the cause, and I'm not going to be anybody's fool. I'm not wasting time anymore. I'm tired of it. I really am. I've lost patience with it. I'm tired of gurus, and I'm tired of cults. Either we take advantage of the opportunity and try to reach people, or just forget it. It's a waste of time, you know? And trying to play these silly little games of you are three tiers, you know, your three layer cake, uh, and you know and I know exactly what we're talking about because if we end the occupation and we bring back six million Palestinians and we have equal rights for Arabs and Jews, there's no Israel. That's what it's really about. And you think you're fooling anybody? You think you're so clever? that people can't figure that out for themselves? No, they understand the arithmetic perfectly well. Are you going to reach a broad public which is going to hear the Israeli side, they want to destroy us? No, you're not. And frankly, you know what? You shouldn't. You shouldn't reach a broad public because you're dishonest. And I wouldn't trust those people if I had to live in the state. I wouldn't. It's dishonesty. And I don't want that kind of leadership. You know, then at least be honest what you want. We want to abolish Israel, and this is our strategy for doing it. Okay, be straightforward about it. But this kind of duplicity and disingenuousness, oh, we're agnostic about Israel. No, you're not agnostic. You don't want it. Then just say it. But they know full well, if you say it, you don't have a prayer reaching a broad public. That's where the public is now. You're not going to reach them, and it's a waste of time. I, I can't deal with it anymore. I'm really, I'm, I'm very tired of it. Uh, uh, you have an opportunity now. That's what I'll talk about tonight. We have a chance to reach a broad public. People are sick and tired of Israel. They're weary of it. The Europeans, you know, this has gone on too long. This has gone on long in the Hundred Years' War, this crazy Israel-Palestine conflict. It's like the War of the Roses, the Hundred Years' War, and everything put together. 
they're tired of it. You know, we have a chance to reach the public. And if we miss it now, it's criminal. It's criminal. I'm not going to participate in something that's going to squander a historic opportunity, maybe to end it. Hey, it can happen. I just came back from Northern Ireland. They found a settlement. And you know, you talk to Protestants, you talk to Catholics, most people are willing to live with it. You know, there are some people who find it unacceptable, but most people, it's okay. We can live with it. And I think you can find a settlement to Israel-Palestine, which virtually everybody, in particular the Palestinians, they can live with. Perfect? No. Ideal? No. We can live with? Yes. We can find that kind of settlement. It's possible. Uh, but the opportunity may just be squandered. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lutnan. Yeah.